Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where it's about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Lucifer Season 6, Episode 9, another great episode. The penultimate episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I was actually quite surprised. So, like, on both accounts, like, oh, it's Lucifer not becoming God is kind of what led to things. Which, technically, to an extent, yes. Uh, but I also also thought, like, oh, man, it's going to end up being Rory. It's like, no, it's his siblings that are basically breaking the world because they're trying to, like, answer people's prayers. And they've kind of been running amok because usually it's like, that's kind of God's territory. But they've been all over the world doing that, taking things into their own hands. Like, for example, that lion runs rampant because that guy who is, I'm assuming, is on death row. He wants his... Uh, Miyagi, his cat, uh, and then um, his like this one of his, his like very broish kind of buff and dumb sibling we met last season uh, is the one answering prayer. It seems like all of them have like even the the frog falling like was one of their siblings too. It's like yeah, like um, didn't know that those could be picked up at stores, but also has terrible aim apparently. So that's what happened. So Aminadel's like, right, Lucifer, you got to become God. And he's like, he's like, you can't put it off any longer because Aminadel's trying to tell his siblings to get in line, but they won't listen to him. It's like, you're not God to us. But Lucifer's like, right, I've had a revelation. Yeah, I got my wings back and everything, but I realized I don't want to be God. It's not my calling. It's like, what? The angels that were lost during that war, that that war, that fight, he's like, I get it, I understand, brother, but the, the fact of the matter is, because now we know that the world actually isn't ending, we do know that, um, now we know it's just our siblings behind it, that means we don't have to worry about it, like, everything's going to be fine, like, you know, we have long enough to kind of, like, figure things out, if, you know, if I'm not going to be God, we can find, uh, a different solution for it. Hard cut to, um, uh, Lamech in, uh, prison, and Dan's there, because he's like, right, I know you're tied to my guilt, but he's like, why would I feel guilty, like, get, feel guilty that you didn't, um, that I didn't catch you? And it's like, yeah, but why is Dan still here? He's confronting Lamech. And Lamech's looking a little like, uh, like, I was like, is he going to, like, I was wondering if we were going to go down the route of him asking for forgiveness. But in the grand scheme of things, he's probably still shaking and reeling from um, Lucifer. Like, probably seeing, like, what him and Maze did to everybody, like, last season. That, um, I mean, it's actually an interesting parallel because he pops up in the, like, it was actually the third or last episode, or was it the penultimate episode, the whole Dan thing? I think that might have been the penultimate episode, so, like, the parallels, yeah, they're they're there, like, so it's like, right, he pops up in this episode as well, so, um, the, the final season and everything, so I think that's kind of interesting. Um, obviously, the n number different is different, because that, that was episode 15, even though it was, like, season 5B, episode 9, but you, you get what I'm trying to say. Not even episode 9. That was episode 7. I'm stupid. But it's like the second to last episode of the season, regardless. It, it, it still fits what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm being stupid. Uh, but regardless, I thought that was so um, interesting, you know. And sadly, because of just like the ripple effect of everything. It's like the lion running rampant into prison. Scared the guard off who didn't even close the door back all the way. So Lamech ended up escaping. I was like, oh, this is potentially going to be an issue. But I'm like, he'd come after Lucifer. But it's not anything he could actually do. Lucifer's devil can't actually hurt him in any shape or form. So I don't... I don't see how that would be possible, you know? So, regardless, I, I think that's uh, fascinating. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there's a whole thing for Lucifer. He's celebrating and happy and everything because it's like, yeah, I'm uh, not going to be God. And he's got his little checklist of uh, become God, but he scratches that out. Prove to Rory that you love her. Um, there was a whole bunch, but obviously I, I couldn't help but take notice rewatch Bones. I'm like, this show is obsessed with Bones. I love it. Because uh, him and Rory even have a moment later on about Bones. She's like, yeah, it's about more Bones. It's about Booth and Bones' uh, cyborg daughter or something like that. I'm like, oh, the ridiculousness. I love it. But um, Lucifer's celebrating stuff like that, but then Chloe kind of looks a little disheveled. I was like, oh, because she does not know that it's not the end of the world. She's like, no, I know that, but uh, did you forget what date it is? He's like, what? She's like, it's August 4th, the day you disappear. And he was like, why don't you tell me sooner? Like, you know I'm terrible with dates, but it's kind of a thing of like, well, and the fact of the matter is, all I have to do is not go to Tenth and Swanson. I'll just stay here. Everything will be fine. It'll be all copacetic. It'll be good. Like, you know, like nothing is set in stone. Uh, because at the end of the day, we have a choice. And it's like, yeah, all you have to do is just not choose to go. And it's like, yeah, that's that's fine and dandy. So, 
uh, she decides to go into work and everything because it's like, right, you know, we, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make plans for tomorrow and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, and once we do, like, that way we don't have to worry about it. That way we're, we believe that, like, things can change. But then spinning like Rory shows up and it's you know because initially Lucifer's having like this panic room built because he's like right if I'm locked in here and it won't unlock until the next day so like that way uh we can get around it like the fact is that he even built that shows that there is a part of him scared you know like you know it could be reassurance or whatnot but it just confirms to Chloe later on like you don't believe like there's some part of you that does believe that this isn't going to work out but the fact is he's building a panic room but even Rory kind of points out the time loop of this all because it's like right if you never disappeared, I wouldn't be here right now. That Because the fact is, I'm still here means you disappeared. I was so angry with you, and I time-traveled time here, so it still happens, meaning, like, it's set in stone. It's something that, it's almost like a fixed point in time, almost like it's meant to happen. It's going to happen. And so, Lucifer kind of, like, he, like, he doesn't like that notion, and so he's just like, right, you know what, I'm just going to stay here. And she's like, right, I thought, you know, it's going to be your last day. You're supposed to be the king of, like, debauchery and stuff like that. He's like, you know what, show me how to have fun and stuff like that. And they have a lot of fun. It's like, oh, like, all this uh, bakeries, uh, baked goods. It's like, yeah, I'll take one of everything. All this jewelry, take one of everything. Um, them throwing water balloons at each other. And then even, like, because it's, it's sweet because you're, like, even, because it's not the debaucherous fun that Lucifer would normally have and probably, like, uh, Rory would normally have. But it's, like, yeah, it's this very, like, really sweet father-daughter moment. It's, like, the, like, real first, like, true blue father-daughter. Like, they've had the moments, but it's also, like, almost, like, um... Rory's kind of got that teen angst to her, like, ugh, whatever. Like, obviously, like, she loves Chloe. Obviously, she resents uh, Lucifer not being in her life. So, obviously, like, even the car driving and stuff like that, there's moments like that. But this is, like, the true blue, like, father-daughter bonding moments that they have. Them throwing water balloons down below on people and even, like, them sumo wrestling and just having so much fun. It's it's beautiful. And like I said, them on the couch talking. And um, Chloe returns and he's like, yeah, the fact of the matter is everything's good, but... For Chloe, what still upsets her is that on some well, on some level, he still believes like no, like because that means on some level you you think that it's not going to work out, but it, it's supposed to. Like, don't be so. He wants to believe like in free will, and because that is like the and ends up being something Linda brings up earlier on and it, later on, and it's something I kind of brought up in a previous review of like it is kind of a weird like paradox in itself because it's like there's a conversation about free will, but if Rory's from the future and your future like if you've made choices that led to that future does that mean everything doesn't that technically mean everything's set in stone because she comes from a future where the choices we made led to that so like is there any such thing as actual choice like everyone you know she believes as a therapist there's such thing as free will that there's a discussion of choice but it does make you go but that's what I'm saying like because that's a complicated thing because, like, yeah, knowing what choices were made, you could potentially try to, like, pick the opposite choice. But the thing is, you want things to a certain extent to play out that way because it's like, right, I want um, Rory to be born. So I want us, me and Chloe, to have her in the future. So we need everything to go a certain way to a, up to a, a certain point. But we want things to be a little different. So it's like if you you take different choices you can change things but if you don't take different choices you have you run the risk of things staying the same you know cuz the conversation is like if she's here her very existence being here means that it changed things on some level maybe once again it just depends on every everything's got its own time travel rules and stuff like that um because that's all the whole conversation about like right um once again, it's always Final Fantasy 13. I will go to 13 2 specifically about like it's not just about changing the past to change the future. You can also change the future to change the past because in that situation, it's like once again, I'm not I don't know if anything else uses those time travel rules. It's, it might be very unique to 13 2, but it's like basically by changing the future, like you basically to balance it out, the cosmic the cosmos has to rewrite the past to fit the new narrative of the future that was created, essentially. Once again, I don't know if anything else uses those time travel rules. 13.2 is the only one I'm aware of that does that, but it's still just a fascinating thing to kind of think about. I don't think that applies in this particular situation, but it's still, once again, like, just different time travel rules. But, um, but it, it makes you wonder on, it, but it, like I said, it's like Rory's very being here must change things, but her still being here means nothing did change that, you know, the timeline's still the same. So 
but and that's the most upsetting thing for Chloe because she's saying like if you even like entertain the thought of like because she's like I believe that there's such thing as choice that you don't have to leave but like why do you why do you still want to like why is there even some part of you that wants to believe it because I think for Lucifer it's like I got to be realistic because I don't want to leave but then I worry's like what if there's something so powerful he doesn't have a choice but to leave you know and because she's gained that perspective now like realizing like i know you don't want to leave but like it might not yeah and it's like well what you know if that's the case of like he has no choice then what's what is free choice then what is free will if it just amounts to this that even now it's like you know and that's the most upsetting thing for her it's like she just you know until he basically choose it's like why can't you believe in us you know it's so like i was saying lucifer well rory's just kind of like you know um kind of fates a bitch, you know? But he goes to see Linda, and Linda's folding all these old clothes for Charlie that he's kind of outgrown, which Lucifer ends up taking and giving to um, Chloe later, I thought was, you know, obviously for a, uh, a young, uh, uh, the soon-to-be uh, Rory, because I skipped over it, but in a conversation, it's like everything's playing into itself, into the loop, because Chloe is pregnant with Rory right now. So... Um, like I said, they had that whole conversation about everything, and Linda's like, oh, right, because you think you're going to disappear, you know, and it's like, right, like, if you think this is your final day, he's like, well, live it like it's my last, and she's like, no, I don't know, whoever came up with that, you know, but it's like, right, if it is going to be, like, you live, like, make sure the people you love most in the world know how much you care about them, and, like, he took that advice, and before he left, I love it, him being like, Linda, like, you know, you know I care about you, right? She's like, I know I'm the best, he's like, yes, you, you know, slightly better than, like, uh, slightly more than better, but it's like, no, just as a friend, like, you are just letting her know how important she is to him, just, not just as a therapist, but as a friend, I'm like, oh, I'm starting to get teary, dude, this episode got me a little teary-eyed all across the board, like, all the, like, moments he has with everyone, it's so awesome, um, he has his moment with, um, because after that, he leaves and goes and meets with Ella. And Ella's like, right, no, glad to know like the world's not ending and stuff like that. Well, yet, you know. And she's like, I'm glad you guys kept me in the loop. And he's like, I'm sorry about that. And she's like, you know what, it's okay. She's like, she like had to keep everything from Carol last episode. But then uh, it's like, a, you know, that conversation with Carol made her realize, like, right, uh, just because... Um, you don't know everything there is to know about someone. Uh, you you know, if knowing their heart is all you really need to do to trust them. And she knows their hearts. And Lucifer's still apologetic. He's like, we never meant to, like, ever make you feel excluded, you know? And, um, you know, I just want to kind of say this in case I never uh, get a chance. She's like, whoa, what am, what, am I dying? He's like, no. She's like, okay, wait, are you dying? He's like, no, I mean... Well, for her, it's like, well, eventually, yes. And he's like, well, I don't think so for me. It's just, all right, cool, cool, cool. Then what it is, he's like, basically, there's a chance something might make me go away. And I might not have, I don't know what it is and I don't know when. And she's like, is there anything I could do about it? He's like, no, I don't, I don't know, even know what it is. So I, there's nothing anyone can do about it potentially. But um, he wanted to make sure everything was good between them. It's like, um he ends up giving her something and she's like he's like will you accept this gift she's like a heartfelt gift like fine if you go to a smart arm i'll take it. and he's like oh it's a pencil she's like, oh i love it you know i always say about it. he's like turn it over and it says miss lopez like stem and it's like what he he made a foundation in her name so that other young women can get into like science and technology and stuff like that because the world would be a better place with more people in it like ella i'm like oh that's so sweet and her and lucifer i'm like ah yes and then, oh boy, Maze. Oh, that's so good. That's that one's so damn good. Cause I love that he's like, hey, I just want to see you off, you know, just in case we don't get to see. You. She's like, I'm gonna be gone like a couple weeks, you know. It's gonna be, you know, plus like sex and stuff like that. So it's like it's not gonna be like forever or whatever. And because he had he went up to her and hugged, like extended arms out. She's like, what What are you doing? He's like, we hug. I'm going for a hug. She's like, yeah, but we don't do that. He's like, yeah, better time than now. She's like, what's up? Are you in trouble? Do you need Do you need my help? He's like, no. Like, I, he's like, no, Maze. Like, because she's like, whatever it is, I can, like, put off the honeymoon. But he was like, no, Maze. Like, and I, I thought it was so sweet. It's like, you've always, like, gone above and beyond for me. Like, you know, it's it's time for me to, you know, you've always kind of put me first, essentially. You've always kind of, like, been there for my, like, selfish needs, essentially. Like, you know? And I wasn't always, you know, it's like, you are my best friend, Maze. And I wish I had treated you like that, more like that before. 
And she's like, before, he's like, you know, before now, you know? I'm like, I thought it was, you know, because it's like, you know, May, you know, because Maze is like, we're even, you know, call us even, because he's like, I owe you so much, but she's like, no, call it even, like, I, because he was saying like, well, I'm going to butcher it, but it was basically like, you don't kind of need me in your, you don't need me type of thing. And she was like, um, she's like, right. But if it, if I didn't have you, I, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have the family I have in my, I wouldn't have what I have right now if it wasn't for you. And she says, like, so let's call it even. It's like, all that you've given me, we could never be even. I was like, oh, dude. And slowly through the conversation, you can tell Maze is kind of picking up. She doesn't know the, I think the ins and out, but she knows like, Right, something's going down and we might not. Like, I don't know if she knows about the ro full Rory situation of, like, Lucifer disappearing like that. She probably does. And that's where she gets the context. Because not everyone knows. Like, Maze, Linda, uh, and Chloe slash Rory are, like, the only ones who are in the know. Like, Aminadel and uh, Dan definitely are in the dark about that. Uh, we would we'll, we'll get to Aminadel in a second. But, like, her tearing up as her back was turned. It was like, because she knew this might actually be goodbye. And so... She gives, like, Lucifer her blade, and it's like, he's like, no, I couldn't. She's like, this way, no matter what, you'll always have a piece of my, I'm like, nice! Because it, because they haven't, all, they haven't always been copacetic, but it is a thing of, you are my best friend, and I just wish I had always, like, treated you that way, you know? And that's always what Maze probably always wanted, but it's like, regardless of anything, for them to be where they are. And her, her, showing how much Maze is growing to for her to be, like, tearing up about this, like, this might be goodbye, and, um... Like, actually hugging him, too. Saying goodbye, Lucifer. It's like, oh, dude. Because Aminadel's side of things, really quickly, um, he had talked with Chloe about, like, right, Lucifer not taking the throne, but it's like, what am I going to do? And she's all like, well, what about you, Aminadel? You've always been a responsible one, like, I'm someone that's so caring and, you know, kind. But he's like, I turned down that, you know, months ago when Lucifer, like, when, it, when I was considered. But for, because um, for him, it's like, I want to stay on Earth and look after Charlie. But Chloe's like, well, God doesn't have to, like, rule in heaven, does he? She's like, yeah, but that's how my... He's like, that's how my father did it. She, but then he was like, yeah, but maybe there's a better way of handling things going forward. And she's kind of like... He's he's honest. He's like, I got to get it, give it some serious thought. But when he runs into Lucifer later on, he talks about running things differently, like getting his their siblings in line, even suggesting kind of almost like a democracy rather than it just being God's voice that resonates. It's like, right, like our siblings stop doing the like miracles and prayers on their own, like answering those on their own. But we kind of like hear everybody's ideas because it's like, right, wouldn't have meant a lot if like we had talked, to, if dad had talked to us and like got our opinion about certain things. And then Lucifer finally like, oh, you want to be, he, he's like, yeah, you know, he's like, this is what I desire, you know, because um, he's like, you remember with dad's final words that we'll figure it out. He's like, I think I finally know what he meant, because it was up to then to both like, because Lucifer at the time thought that's what he wanted. And now it's a situation where both of them have figured out what they wanted. Lucifer realizing being God isn't what he wants. And for a minute, though, it's figuring out that is what he wants. It's what he desires, you know. And uh, he's like, yeah, after this declaration and stuff like that, because Aminadel's kind of thinking like, oh, like, it's like, right, being a father and everything's going to take up your time and even thinking like, like, he, he's not realizing because he doesn't know the circumstances and Lucifer isn't filling him in about it because it's like, right, I don't want you to know all the details because it, it's fine because at the end of the day, um, I don't, you know, because like, Luce, because Aminadel has more to focus on now that he's becoming God. And he's even like, right, here's this, um, here, I want uh, there to be a partnership between Lux. Uh, this way we can kind of run things together. And then like, I love Aminadel being like, oh, we could hire siblings. They could be bouncers, and maybe even dancers and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, already coming up with good ideas already, brother, you know? And I love what Lucifer says of like, you know, it's like, you know, I've never told you this, but I'm glad you're my you're my favorite brother, brother. The fact is that I'm glad we got I got to spend this time on Earth with you. And it's like they've grown closer. Like their relationship has definitely gotten repaired, much like the, both of their relationships with their dad and mom got repaired because of this time on Earth. Because that was also a thing too. Aminadel wants angels to spend at least a year or two on Earth just to kind of get closer to humanity and kind of understand it. Because a lot of the angels had like a oh we're better than humanity perspective. They look down upon humanity, but if you walk a mile in their shoes, it'll give them a different perspective on things you know obviously like a minute ago it's kind of like right it might take a couple days or whatever to kind of 
you know, sort things out and stuff like that, you know, but, you know, put everything into motion. But he's like, you're not going to get rid of me that easily, brother. And it's like, once again, he just doesn't know what's happening. So I thought that was like so um, beautiful and like, you know, and heartbreaking in its own right. Um, but then there's the whole situation with uh, Dan. Uh, that's interesting, like, obviously that guy, uh, like, Lamech is about to run, he's getting die and stuff like that, like, like I said, for part of me I was wondering, like, is Lamech really gonna, like, he's kind of an evil mercenary dude, so I'm like, are, are we setting this up for him to have a change of heart or something, but it's like, no, like, uh, Dan was like, hoping that the dude, Josh, who's running, like, the store would call the cops, but he reached for a gun, Lamech grabbed it, and it's like, no, he's gonna kill you, dude, luckily in that moment, um, Dan hopped into his body, and I love the whole thing. I'm like, no, no, we're good, bro. It's like, yeah, I'm a good dude inside an evil dude's body. And he's like, yeah, here's a gun back. And the guy points a gun at him. He's like, really, bro? I just saved your life. It's like, Dan, you really expect him to... Okay. And it's just him bumping into the door leaving. He's like, oh, man, I missed this. And so he ends up going to Lucifer, and it's like, uh, brace it, brother. It's like, brace it, brother. It's like, oh, yeah, I jumped in this guy's body. And Lucifer's like, of course, only you can do something so wild, crazy, and ridiculous like this, Dan, you know? Um, but obviously, there's a conversation about like him being stuck, and it's like, well, demons usually get stuck in these bodies until they die, until the human body dies. That's usually how it works. So, But for Dan, it's like, there's no, like, either I'd have to live the rest of my life on the run, or I'd have to um, basically live the rest of, like, Lil Matt could be back in jail and have to live out his sentence with him because it's like, that's a purgatory all on its own. And obviously for Lucifer, he has ex explained, like, right, the last, you know, the final hours and stuff like that. Explaining, like, oh, what's going on? And I love Dan being like, oh, then just stay away from 10th and uh, Samson. It's like, thanks, Dan. I didn't think of that. He's like, yeah. But it just comes down to... Because, you know, Lucifer was apologetic. He's like, I wish I could have helped you figure out your hell loop situation. I wish I could have done something for you. While you're, and I just I just don't know. I, I, I'm I sorry I couldn't be helpful to you. Like, he's never been so sincerely. Up, like, he's been it a little bit. But this is kind of him taking responsibility and just being very apologetic to Dan about, like, right. Because he didn't really get into the nitty gritty of it. But it's like, Dan is someone he cares about, too. You know? And so I thought it was so... Um, Interesting that he's saying, like, yeah, you and heaven where you belong. And I was like, once again, an interesting line, just because, obviously, Rob Benedict, who plays that, uh, plays Lamech, uh, was, once again, Chuck God on um, Supernatural. So, like, that line just reads even more interesting. It's like, you, you know they wrote those lines specifically, because, like, the Supernatural people are like, hey... Like, you have to. Like, I mean, there's a possibility it wasn't thought of, but I feel like there had to be at least some thought of, like, oh, that's actually kind of an interesting line for, like, getting Lucifer to say that to Chuck. You know, it's like, well, to God from a different series, but you get what I'm saying. But, um, yeah, it's like about, like, obviously Lucifer spending his final hours trying to, like, be with the people he cares about. It's like, where do you want to be? And so... Well, let's go ahead and do deal with the whole Dan thing. He ends up meeting up with uh, Trixie at her camp, and and she like she's like stranger danger, and she takes him down. He's like, "Whoa, did you learn that from Maze?" And she's like, "You know Maze?" It's like, "Yeah, I know him and your dad's like you're a cop." It's like, "Yeah," and she's like, "Ready there?" Like, All right, what's this test? And it's like, "What's this?" And it's like, "Well, he answers." It's like, uh, "What's my like? What's my dream job?" It's like president of Mars, and what's my favorite meal? It's like chocolate cake. Even though your dad tells you that's not an actual meal, she's like, "Okay, okay, you're cool." Um, but obviously they had the conversations about like, yeah, like your dad talked about you all the time and he, he really loved you. Um, that it, you know, I'm, he's sorry that he had to leave. He didn't do it on purpose, you know, and he wishes he could have like, you know, stuck around to be a better role model for you. And she's like, what? You know, my dad was awesome. Like, take it back. And he was like, no, like he made mistakes. He's like, yeah, but everyone makes mistakes. My dad talks about making mistakes and kind of basically learning and growing from them. And for Dan, it's just kind of like, you know, hearing, like, that's, I, I, and so I was technically right. His guilt was about leaving Trixie because it's like, he felt, he was so, like, yeah, he dealt with the guilt over his mistakes, but like, he, his biggest mistake in his mind was like, I wasn't a good role model to Trixie, but it's like, no, like, for Trixie, it's like, I, my dad was awesome. I, mistakes and all, like, I love him. He was a good role model. I love him, and he'll always be with me, you know? And I thought that was beautiful. And for Dan, it's like, I think it's exactly what he needed to hear. Because it is also the conversation of, like, right, like, despite my mistakes, like, I was a good father. Cause, I mean, look at the great little girl that I've 
I've raised. Which, once again, it's like, when you look at the actress who plays Trixie, like, seeing, like, how tall she is now, it's like, it's kind of crazy, like, go back and look, like, think about, like, how tiny she was, and, like, look how, like, she, obviously, it's like, she's a, she's a kid, so obviously you're gonna see her, we've literally seen her grown up, grow up over the course of this show, so that's interesting. And, um, and I knew, like I said, I, I knew the Dan and like, oh, cause it broke my heart last season. I knew it was going to break my heart this season, but it's like, it, there's a beautifulness to it. And it's like, Dan's like, do you see that light? And she's like, no. I'm like, okay, weirdo. And the moment this happened, I'm like, Dan's about, I was like, please tell me you can get Lamech back to prison before you, oh, you're off to heaven. I'm like, what's going to happen to Lamech? Oh, he's just normal. But then he starts flexing. He's like, oh my God. And he starts feeling good. I was like, is it cause he was touched by an angel or something like in that moment of like dan being released it gave him some celestial powers on something level of like he was touched by like the powers of heaven because they came to get him but by reaching in to get daniel out of his body they ended up like bestowing something up something divine to uh lamac that's what i'm curious about we'll get to that later on why i thought i'm feeling like that but uh the other side of things is Lucifer coming over to Chloe and, you know, telling her, like, he doesn't want things to kind of, um, because, like, he doesn't want to go, but at the end of the day, none of us knows what tomorrow holds, you know? Because that was also the thing, like, none of us know the future. Like, all we have is today, you know? And I think that's the beautiful thing of just kind of, like, yeah, not strict. Like, think about, yeah, we don't know what the future holds, so don't get too caught up in it because, like, you... At the very least, you have today, and that's a good way to live life too. Is like, don't be so reckless. You don't think about the future, but do realize, like, you have today. Not living every day like it's your last, but you have today to do what you need to do to make the people you care about know. Like, it doesn't necessarily be viewed as like, oh, it's my last day, but just viewed as like a, you have today. All we have is the present. You know, a lot of times we have a tendency, myself included, to live in the past, to live in the future about mistakes and stuff like that. But it's like, right. We have today, and it's it's nice to kind of not lose sight of that and live in the present. So, goes on a vacation beach day with uh, Chloe and uh, Rory. I love that. It's like, you know, kind of family vacay to an extent. Uh, but uh, Lucifer talking to Rory, it's like, um, I know I kind of, like, was very dismissive of, like, what you said about me disappearing. and Because at the time, he didn't want to believe it. But now it's like, you know, now I, I do believe you. And he's like... Um, I know what it's like to be abandoned by a father and to, you know, not only be angry at them, but also angry at yourself, believing that you're some kind of monster, like you did something wrong. And he's telling Rory, like, I hope you never felt that way. And it seems like she kind of did. And he's like, like, if I could stay, like, no matter what happens, I want you to know if I can stay, I will choose to. And at the end of the day, Rory's kind of like, I know, I believe you, you know. Because it's, it, you know, because Rory's gotten to know him now and realizing, like, she knows where his heart lies, that he cares about her, he loves her, that if he could, he'd never leave her and Chloe by choice, you know? And so in this moment, they're together as a family, um, but Rory leaves because she's like, right, I don't, I, I want to keep this memory of us, like, together, like, I want to keep this memory of everything being perfect, because if you disappear, I don't want to be here to see it, you know? And Lucifer's like, should I go after her? And Chloe's like, no, she has, uh, Everyone should be allowed. To, everyone should be allowed to make her cho their choices, even her. So let her make her choices. And but when they do get back, they're looking at the panic room, or rather, like everything's going to be okay room, or, or something of the sort. So they lock themselves in there. And obviously, Lucifer has a lot he wants to say to Chloe, but she's like, "No, I don't want to hear it." Like I thought she he was going to try and like propose to her or something like that. But it's like right, uh, popping the question now at any time is probably like. You know, that probably would be like, oh, I'm believing that there's going to be a future, but also the argument can be made like, right, you're only doing that because you think there's no tomorrow for you. And so she's like, right, just just be here with me right here, right now. It is kind of a, a quaint little panic room. He's like, yeah, I know. I kind of just threw it together. It's like, no, it's pretty freaking sweet. Uh, this uh, panic room could be a great man cave in its own right. I mean, I guess it kind of serves that purpose as well. But uh, yeah, the door unlocks because it is in the next day because they had like 40 minutes. It's like, wait, everything's okay. I'm still here. Ha ha, take that face. Uh, and he's like, he gets a call from Rory. He's like, right. He's like, I'm not going to gloat too much. It's like, Rory. But it turns out it's Lamac. 
he has Rory. And I'm like, how would he be able to get control of her? She's an angel. But also part of me wonders, is it like, is she not, because she's half angel, does that change the equation for her? Like, does because, well, she's never been in a situation where she's gotten hurt over the course of the show. So we don't know, like, because obviously she ages slowly in the sense that like, she ages, so like, she ages because she's part human, but she ages super slowly because she's an angel. Because she's like, right, I'm older than I look. So it begs the question, like, is it just because she's half human and she got hurt in the process? Like, how would he know to come after Rory? Like, maybe she found out, knew something about the past, the future, and she, like, because she's always had the answer, so she wanted to deal with something herself and ended up getting caught. Because I felt like if it was going to be anybody, it would have been Trixie that would have gotten kidnapped. But I don't know if he... Like, how would, like I said, how would he know? Like, maybe, like, when he, like I said, got touched by the Divine when Dan got pulled out. Uh... Or maybe it's because even though Dan was possessing his body, he heard all of Lucifer's conversation with Dan. So he knows about Rory and everything. But, you know, like I said, I feel like there has to be more to it. Maybe we'll, we'll definitely, I say maybe, we'll definitely get answers to it. But I'm, I'm curious how that whole thing works. But um, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The next episode is the series finale of Lucifer. It, it's kind of wild to think that it's come down to this, that we're here while well, I'm here. Obviously, different people have gotten here at different points, you know, because I'm, it's what, Tuesday at the time of recording, just because I've been, like, so caught up with other stuff, but it, I, um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to, uh, you know, see how they uh, wrap this series up. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.